the woman who spins elaborate and seemingly intelligent theories that inevitably prove that men are her enemy and her oppressor. The black guy who spins elaborate and seemingly irrefutable and intelligent theories that inevitably prove that the white guy is his oppressor. The Irishman who writes poems and songs that all seem to say the same thing. The Englishman is my oppressor. I am the victim. Now, this sort of passive-aggressive identity politics has been with us since the dawn of time. It's uh, there in the Old Testament. It's there in many uh, works of tribal literature going back as far as human literature goes. We are the good people. They are the bad people. They are stronger than us. They are oppressing us. That makes them bad. What I don't understand is people who are so annoyed and so affected by this. Some people are infuriated beyond measure by this kind of thing. Um, and what I think the cause of that is the fact that they give it far more credence. They, they confer far too much power up on what is ultimately just a stunt. If you go out into the street and have a great big march and you march against, say, the patriarchy and um, you, um, you chant all the usual angry feminist um, slogans and um, just basically frame a debate in extremely stark terms, it feels mighty good to some people who, who actually may actually believe that men are automatically their oppressors, but it's not going to accomplish anything and it never has. Passive-aggressive identity politics tend to be um, actual detriments to the causes they purport to serve and promote. When you go out there and your goal is to identify the oppressors in, in this world, single them out and vilify them, even by um, passive-aggressive means, it just tends to turn people off. If you ask me the purpose of a march, the purpose of a philosophy, the purpose of writing a book on a matter is to raise awareness, is to make the world a better place. When you say that I am inherently the victim and I have through this long process been able to identify who the who the oppressor is, who the perpetrator is, you're justifying scapegoating. And we all know where that goes. But the thing is, as I say, people don't buy it. That's why I honestly don't understand why so many um, males out there are so adversely affected by feminism of this sort. Why does it bother people so much when at the end of the day all that it inevitably involves are stunts and pranks and people venting their rage? Nobody buys it. You have to have a little more faith in people's ability um, to see through things like this. Get to know real feminists who are actually in, uh, intent upon um, dealing with the problems that women have to deal with um, specific to their gender, who actually have practical issues that they want to get solved. Ask them what they think about passive-aggressive identity politics. You'll see that the feminists, the real ones, are on your side. Thank you.